All right, everybody, welcome to the Studying Brew, episode 858 on this beautiful Monday evening. Oh my goodness, as we prepare for the deluge of Southern California, I hope you guys are all home safe, wherever part of the country you're in. I know we got people from the East Coast to the West Coast, to Hawaii, Alaska sometimes. Guys, it's so good to have all of you on here. Let me tell you, it is uh, always good to have family around you every night. And that's what I consider you guys all part of the Kona family. And uh, we want to help you guys get that pass notice with that securities license. Yeah? Yep. We had a great weekend celebrating my daughter's uh, 15th birthday. She's turned 15. And uh, how time flies, you know what I mean? And uh, it's it's been a it's been a journey. It's been a ride. And I uh, want to say thank you all for uh, allowing us to be able to do that. And uh, we had a lot of good feedback about what's going on with the Kona Academy and all the great stuff. And guys, we are just so blessed to be here. Let me tell you. Well, my name is Andy. I'm the guy that runs the back office over here at Kona Butterflies and all the fun music and all the stuff. But you're not here for my DJ skills. Now you're here for Brandy, she's got her Series 6, 63, 26, 65, and her Series 7, which makes her more than qualified to teach you all the things you need to know, so that way you too can get a pass notice. And uh, I know uh, if you were on here live, I put in the chat, I did play a song by Leonard Skinner, uh, uh, Curtis Blow. Uh, that was for my, my, my best friend who I called my brother. Uh, met him when I was 15 years old, taught me how to build cars, weld, do just about everything my first part of my life. Uh, was a dad to me when I didn't have one and who was a brother always. And uh, sadly, I lost him last night. Uh, I just got bold today and uh, a couple hours before we got on here. Uh, so sorry if I'm a little bit somber, but uh, but guys, I, I know that a lot of you have lost people as well. I know a lot of you understand and uh, it's tough, but we have to push on. We have to uh, we have to live another day. We have to live for the for the non right. We have to do best for them and i know that sometimes when we're in the midst of our studying and and sometimes we hit hit by these kinds of things and life and all the different things you know you got to find the strength and you have to find the the the, the power to just you know you know what I, i'm still alive i gotta live the for the people who are around me and still living and loving and we still remember those who passed and we remember all the good things uh they passed on to you and and you know you just uh you know, you reel back those memories and you just, you just, you just go on, you know, you have to go on and it's the toughest thing. And, you know, a lot of you guys have uh, been there for me when I lost my son as well. And guys, I know what it's like. And I know, I know. And uh, for me, it's been tough, you know, for the last few years because I've been sober and dealing with that has been tough for me and, uh, you know, and, and doing it in healthy ways. And I tell you guys all the time, live healthy and do all those things because I know what it's like. I know how hard it is sometimes to get through it. But guys, you can. You can do it. You can push through. And I know that, you know, all these things do happen. And uh, and I'm just here to tell you guys. And look, I you just you just gotta keep praying. You just keep moving and you just find another way. You know, even as hard as it is, you just gotta put one foot in front of the other. And then you just uh, you know, you have your moments, right? So I just want to say that I Appreciate you all. So if I sound a little bit less funny as I normally do, uh, just just know my mind is somewhere else. But I'm here. I'm here, and I'm glad and I'm blessed. And uh, just like when uh, whenever I feel, you know, like uh, we've lost or I've lost something, I always think of all the things I've gained and all the blessings I have around me. And definitely all of you, uh, whether you're on here live or watching the recording or all the ones past and far between the Kona family, I just uh, it, it you know. It just gives me a great, you know, feeling inside, you know, just just feeling blessed. I mean, just amazing just to be uh, just to be loved and prayed for by so many. And uh, and I appreciate all of you and I pray for all of you as well. Um, I know that's not the, the chipper way of starting all this thing, but you know what? Let's get on with it, Brandy. Let's go. Uh, we got the Kona Academy happening. We got a lot of stuff happening in the next few weeks. We got the end of the month coming, but we are wrapping up week three. And um, uh, the Kona Academy, we are uh, heading into it. Uh, Brandy is uh, going to be doing that tomorrow as we do the 63 and the 26. I mean, 
as we did the SIE, the six and the 63, yes. 26 and 65 was pretty dang good. So make sure that you've got those replays. But guys, there was a reminder that went out earlier. We have a new Zoom code for week three. So make sure you grab that. That is starting. Um, and I have some people that are asking, should they wait till March? Look, if you want to get in on the Kona Academy, yeah, start in March. But I don't know what your goals are. I don't want you to stop your goals or push back your goals because you want to be on on the first of uh you know March. It's it, you know we have a great twenty one day plan as well that can start at any time. You could just start going at that, and then that way you can uh, already begin your journey. And it's a more of a self study, not the guided one like the academy. But you can still get what you need out of that twenty one day plan, guys. It's got tons of pastors with the twenty one day plan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the way that Brandy and I would be doing it uh, just because we're very impatient people and we like to push forward and we like to go faster yeah. and not slower. So, yeah. but some people like the, the Academy and they like that pace and they, it makes you consistent. So I just want to encourage you that uh, if you are waiting for that March 1st, that there are other ways if you want to check us out, go ahead, scan the QR code, hit the links in the chat. We got study guides available. We got a calendar in that link, by the way, that tells you when everything's starting. We also have uh, um, the Discord, the Kona community, where you can ask questions, get questions, all that great stuff. Plus, you know, we have a great support system, as always. So check it out. We have 951-290-3077. That's where you can call or text me at. And also Instagram and Telegram as well. All right, I already talked about that. We got the SIE 6 and 63 uh, tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, 63. We are doing that uh, at 1 p.m. And uh, yeah, new Zoom code, right? Yep. All right. Anything you want to add about that? Um, no. All right, let's go. <laughs> got it. We are right. playing the Kona catchphrase. Yes, Monday is where we play the Kona catchphrase. This is the key words. If you've heard our passers, we always talk about the key words. Look, guys, if you want the fast way around the track, if you want to know how you want to get to that other end without, like, you know, bombarding yourself with crazy amount of, like, memorization of a crazy 48, 489-page LEM book, guess what? You get our study guide, learn those key words. You know, if you're using our program, we talk about OMS all the time, test taking techniques. We talk about how to read these questions, how to like really diverge, you know, away from divert away from like memorizing stuff that's useless and learning how to quiz. Guys, I talked to at least five people this weekend, literally from other study programs where they had 80s, 90s percents in their Q banks. They did everything they were told and they're like, they don't understand how they didn't pass the exam. Look, it's not about those scores. It's not about memorization of content. I know. I, I, I got a great guy on here now, Eric. He will tell you, guys. He is, he is a, a, a student. He's a teacher. And look, if, he, if it was that easy, he'd be long and gone and whatever. But it, it's difficult because these questions are made to trick you. They are not direct questions on content. They're not. So you got to see past the smoke and mirrors. You got to really key into those key words and just learn how to connect the dots. So tonight we play a fun game where we ask you to look for those key words, see how you match up with Brandy. And it is a great interactive uh, game because I want you, if you're on live, I want you to put in the chat what you think are the key words. Don't simply just put what the answer is. I want you to start seeing the key words. Do not master QBanks. Do not master questions and answers that you see in any Q bank, whether it's Kaplan, STC, exam FX, it doesn't matter because none of those questions are going to be on the exam. They're not going to be on the exam. Not a study, not, not even the practice exam from FINRA. Yep. Not anybody has the questions out there for you to practice. No one does. No one does. So the only way to really prepare is know some content have a technique and strategy, know how to identify keywords, connect them, and just get a pass notice. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. So let's play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far, uh, I've had, like, I don't know how many phone calls or text messages just about that. That's crazy. D, churning. C, capping. B, supporting. A, free riding. Free ride. All right, churning butter, yes. 
Um, let I would say look for something that's more like, um, I wouldn't look in that like what what is the, what's the vibe of these answers? I guess. Yeah. Right. What's yeah. the vibe? Capping stop something. Yeah, that's good. Bad. They're all bad, right? A and D, no bueno. Uh, supporting is good. Capping bottle. I like that. Supporting, encouraging. Uh oh. <laughs> uh y- yes i always did this i always drew it like this like a cheerleader like i'm supporting oh you're supporting something i'm like holding you're like atlas yeah. you're holding up the world yeah like I'm, I'm holding something up all right free riding is that good is that bad um well do we like do we do we do like think about i don't know if i'm getting a ride for free i love it that's true you get something for nothing. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm going to put that. I'm going to put something. For but if it costs me to give someone a ride, no. Not really. Not usually. Not unless we're we're homies. I have a hairbrush in my pocket. Okay. I can hear it on the microphone. Just want you to know. Okay. My bad. Stop. Just want to let you know what that weird sound was. <laughs> uh. Yes. ADD is real. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. A form of market manipulation that attempts to hold the price of security down is called. That's right. It was right there. Mm. Hold the price down. That's right. Capping. Boom. See, in this particular one, look, you might not even know what capping is. I don't know what the heck capping is. I might not even know what it does or what any of that stuff means, right? But this is a perfect example of where you don't need content. You just look at what the words are saying to you and you just go for it. See, that's it. I am an artist. Click it and go. I am an artist. Like that. Okay. $240, $24, $4, $1.80. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Two forty and twenty four dollars, I say, is about the same. C is high, yeah. All half fours. All half fours except A. Didn't even see that. Good, nice, nice, nice. Mm-hmm. I know there's some people holding off for the question because they wanted they want to demonstrate their math skills. I know it. I know. I know it. If I just see the question, Brandy. Yep. C four. See, but we're trying to teach you a skill where you can get answers sometimes without even yeah. looking at the question. Yeah, because I'm looking at these two, right? Because it has a 24 and a 240. My answer is B. Look at someone's just declaring it. Declare it. B. Read the question. Yes. Yeah. LMN Corporation has a $60 par, 4% preferred stock currently trading at 45 per share. Its annual dividend is. Um, B equals. That is third. why you guys are all picking four dollars. Yes, they're all going with four dollars because it's third highest. Ah, because it's the third. Ah ha ha. Ah, ah, ah. This is good. This is not that. That's not the answer. It's not. Ah, oh, it's not the answer. Look at you guys. Answer. Now, someone said two forty. Okay, so there's a couple. Okay, things. let's stop. Let's stop trying to get the answer. Let's look for the keywords in the que- in the question now. Now that we've all been told that it's not $4, yeah. what keywords do we want to zoom in on? What do we want to look at? I don't know. I mean, if we keep staring at each other, I'll have you do it. We'll but... do annual. Okay. Annual. Okay. But we have to have numbers. We have to have numbers. What are the two numbers? We need two numbers that mean something. Yes. This one. Yes. And... 4%. And this one. Perfect. Because we, this is nothing. That means nothing. That one's nothing, right? So, guys, this is how I'm looking at this. Not doing math, okay? Not doing math. But there's a four. I don't know if you guys know this, but four times six is 24. They should know. Right? We know that from our times tables. Yeah. Right? But it's not $24 because it's only, there's only one zero there. One zero. Only one zero. Did you guys? Okay, I. That's how. Guys, if I taught math, only one zero. So I'm only going to put one zero. Is that is that ridiculously easy enough? 
math teachers don't want me to teach math because I would literally teach it like that. There's one zero, put one zero there, 240. Call it a day. Call it a day. And by the way, this, did you guys know, like that percent sign? You guys do it? It's actually like a number divided by a number. <laughs> Sally says, Eric, they would leave your class and go to Brandy's. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I'd have treats too. Yeah. <laughs> Probably would. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at you for blow, uh, chewing gum. I'd have stickers and you can chew gum. Yeah. Don't put it under the desk. Guys, adults, don't put your gum under a table or a chair. Swallow that thing. Be a man. Wow. Poor woman. All right. Proceeds minus dividend plus cost by by basis. Uh, C, proceeds plus cost basis. Proceeds minus cost basis. A, proceeds plus dividends minus cost basis. Um. All right. What do we do here? Well, we know there's proceeds in every single one. There are proceeds. Mm, 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 mm. Proceeds cost basis. I'm going to say A and C have plus first. C and D have minus first. I'm running out of symbols. <laughs> So do we add first or do we subtract first, I guess? Do we even include dividends? Do we plus the dividends? I, I don't, or do we minus the dividends? I don't get out of here with that. Why are we adding in dividends? I don't know. I just started, Brandy. I know. Get, just get out of here. Dividends not included. <laughs> it's like batteries, they're not included either. So then we are already down to two answers? Yeah. So then I look at this as a proceed. What's a proceed? Like a gain, right? So I'm going to do a gain minus a base. Cost basis. So uh, what it costs me to do something, I guess. Right. Or I'm, I'm going to do a gain. Plus, plus the cost, cost. Plus what I bought it for or a cost, right? And that makes no sense. No, because usually if I'm trying to figure out my, my gains and losses and figure out where I'm at on something, I do the, you know, what... The minus and the pluses. Right. Right. The minus and the pluses. And and to figure out, don't we usually do something like sold minus buy? Uh, I see why you would say not the dividends, because dividends, you can't really count on a dividend. No. You don't really know what that's going to be or if and if you get one. So how could you do that? If I'm looking at the end of the year and I'm trying to guess something or maybe I'm at the end of the month or whatever, I can't include those. No. Because how would I know if I'm even getting any? Exactly. Exactly. So just based on that, B is the answer. Right. But let's look at the answer. Which of the following best describes the calculation for gains or losses for tax purposes? I said proceeds is a gain, but I mean, we, we, we know what the answer is, right? We know what oh, the answer is. Now we do. It's B. <laughs> right? Gains or losses, guys. And thank goodness that the tax people don't look at your dividends, right? That's true. Not in gains and losses. No. Because that could mean they would have to foresee or foretell that you got a dividend. How do you always have a dividend? You might not. You can't tax me on something I didn't get. An adjustment offering, a shelf offering, a green shoe option, a flexible offering. Okay. What's a green shoe option? What if I want the red shoe option? I love how you guys are all just cross off B. Well, they were on your class earlier today. If you guys were in my class on last week. Don't know. What a green shoe is? Yeah. Okay. Only one you heard of. Okay. I like this. Only one you've heard of. Yeah. Right? That one's the only one. Now let's go. Let's do. Let's do. And the flexible and adjustment. That's that's tricky. How How are they different at all? That's what I was just going to say. Let's look at the words, right? I'm not saying that they aren't. I'm just saying they sound almost the same. They sound the same. And and honestly, I'm going to put this like this sounds the same. And and how can what does that even mean? A flexible offering? Like let's take and and I, and, and I'm and I'm trying to not use securities vocabulary, right? But like what does that even mean to be a flexible offering? I, if if I need to raise 2 million dollars, I have to raise 2 million dollars. I'm not flexible in that. Does that make sense? Which is the same thing as adjusting. Yeah. 
right and then we and then this one right we've all gone like what the heck is a green shoe and that's hilarious that i'm using green as my that's something to do with gardening <laughs> to like the green thumb <laughs> they're actually you guys are in my class you guys know what that means right so this is the only thing and doesn't this sound like scan like, the qr code on the screen right as a member you can watch a video doesn't this sound like like backstock Right, like it's on the shelf. Yeah, later. it does. Like, it sounds like something I, that's uh, overstock. We were overstock. Overstock. Right. Does that make sense? Right. So okay. So we've heard of shelf offering. It sounds like you're storing it. It's for later. It's back stock. And I don't. When I say back stock, I don't mean back like stock, like a specific type of stock. I'm talking about product. We're talking like shoes from last year. Yes. Like we're talking shoes. about spring shoes. There you go. That are from last year. Right. Uh, Death Inc registered to sell 1 million shares of death common stock they plan to sell 500,000 shares immediately and sell the remainder of the offering within the next two years this is called dude this is easy right here right sell the remainder within the next two years yes oh sorry i started circling yes yes because we already knew it was the only one that we had heard of shelf offer i mean green shoe by the way is a thing but don't worry about it today. If you want to know, then you have to be a member. We have that in our study guide and we have it in our video. That's right. Patreon.com. <laughs> Requiring the licensing of persons affiliated with the broker dealers, regulating the underwriting and distribution of primary additional offerings. B, providing criminal penalties for fraud and the insurance of new securities. A, requiring an issuer to provide full and fair disclosure. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't even see that word. Oh. I don't know what you looked at. The, the and. Oh. Affiliated. Let's go, let's go a little bit more basic, guys, because we have... A people are, see see if you keep tying their shoes brandy they'll stop putting what they think is in the in the chat okay i'm going to give you guys a hint look at the word requiring and then look down full and fair a and d have requiring this is supposed to be testing them so they can get better if we tell them the answers they're not going to get better you're just getting bored i know what it is no, I, I'm trying to get them to see differently. Yeah, but they got to kind of see it. Right. A. We're just going with A. Nah. Because look, I want to show you guys something. I want to show you guys something else. B starts with P. Okay, you're along, along, right? Providing and regulating, right? So we're talking about some sort of regulation, right? But look at this. Check this out, guys. Look, 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 look. Uh, an Who issue provides for criminal p penalties? There we go. Then we have new securities. So we have an issuer and new securities. Don't those link up? And then we have the word offering. Don't those link up? But then this one is people. And that's not. Requiring the licensing of person affiliated with broker dealers. That is the difference. I was going to say doesn't. I was going to say not fit. But it's it doesn't fit. It's the difference. It's the ugly stepsister trying to put on the glass slipper. And are we allowed to say that in Cinderella anymore? Are they still the ugly stepsisters? They're just the stepsisters. Oh, but didn't they originally say that? They, it, dude, they had big, yes. Okay, look. So we already have that D is different, right? And we also have requiring and requiring, right? Guys, what's the answer? It's D. That's it. It sounds like a 63 question almost, but it's probably an SIE. The Securities Act of 1933 protects investors who buy new issues by doing all of the following, except it is an except. Yeah. Why would it provide the licensing? Oh, no, that's weird. Requiring the licensing of persons. Yeah, because guys, for the most part, most of us trade the secondary market. We don't trade the primary. We don't trade the new issues. Most of us. 90 something percent of the New York Stock Exchange is trading between investors, not new issues. That's something completely different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
last one. Because you told me the stock market is for mostly secondary. Mm-hmm. Not new. Hold the rights indefinitely for future use. Allow the rights to expire unexercised or unsold. B, sell the rights and profit from any increased market value. A, exercise the rights to purchase more shares. Yes, we got exercise, sell, allow, and hold. Those are definitely two, you know, a bunch of different verbs and actions. Yes. What are oh, we- there was an exercise and an unexercise. Yes, but... Mm-mm-mm. Hold on. So indefinite, that's a good one. Um, definitely talking about rights. Right? <laughs> sell is different from the rest. Uh, Don't focus it, on the sell. Oh, uh, there's purchase. Um, I have purchased more shares. Um, sell, expire, hold. Mm. You guys ready for the question? We ready? An existing shareholder receives a thousand stock rights from the issuer, allowing the holder to do all of the following except. So what are the key words here? A shareholder receives a thousand stock rights from the issuer, allowing the holder to do all of the following except. The holder has the right. Rights issuer. Guys, there's one more word. One more word. Except? What? So we're looking for something that they can't do. Yes, can't do. Thank you. We're looking for the can't do. What can't they do? Mm-mm. Nope. So we want nope. the we want the rotten egg. Um. So they can't. They can sell it. They can hold it. Thank you, guys. Indefinitely. What does that word indefinitely mean? Didn't we discover here that indefinitely? Good job, no- Sally. There's no extra, like there's no, like indefinite means that we don't have a definite date. We don't have a defined date. There's no defined date. Guys, is there anything in securities that doesn't have a defined date? Is there anything in securities, anything in securities that doesn't, that's just open-ended? Like, hey man, it's been forever. Maybe mutual funds, right? Maybe. But that's that's vocabulary. But everything has a has a time. And 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 didn't we also say this whole thing, this word indefinite? It's like one of those words, those adjective words that don't fit in definitions. Yeah, in a world of definition, definites, because everything has to be defined for the for the security of the investor. And knowing when things happen and protecting people and all these other things, do we have to have like a for sure timeline? Yes. And remember, guys, rights is shorter. Remember the word rights is short. This is this is vocabulary, but rights is shorter than warrants. The word rights is shorter than the word warrants. So this means that this is definitely short term. So it's not going to be a long term future use. No, nah, man. No, man, we can't hold it. We can exercise them. We can sell them. We can let them just go. We can't hold on to them forever. No. Mm-hmm. Gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Yeah. That's it. That's that's it. That's part of it. All right, everybody. See how the play of words. Look, you can know content. You can know all this stuff. And I know a lot of you might have not gotten some stuff right tonight. And you're like, I know this. I know this. I knew that. Why did I not see that? It's the little words that you're missing. It's the little words. And a lot of times it's not content related. No. Indefinite is not a content related. It's more of a common sense thing. It's more of like, that's right. I'm dealing in securities and all this other stuff. It has to have a defined date. That's why we can't do that. So see how what we're talking about. Don't punish yourself over and over again. 
Start learning the key words. Look for those little words that mean something. And you know what? In the beginning, you might have to go slow. You might have to go word by word, and you might have to map it out until you get up to speed on catching these little words. And then, but once you start get used to catching the catch, it gets easier and easier and easier because then it becomes a turkey shoot because then you're just like, oh, I know that word doesn't make sense. Oh, I know that. And it's like, you see it. I approach questions first by their words, second by their content. There you go. There's the somebody that has all the licenses you want and just told you, I look for that before I look for the content. Words first, content second. So what should you do? Oh. Just trying to help you out all. First, first. We got the Academy tomorrow. We've got the Test Taking Techniques Tuesday, Studying Brew, same bat time, same bat channel. I'm glad that you guys all were here, but now it's your turn to go get yourself a quiz. Go put some of those things to test. Go look for those key words. All right, everybody? Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your friend's face. That's all I know. Keep that positive mental attitude. PMA, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you guys so much for being on. We super appreciate you guys. Practice the Kona catchphrase in your quizzes. We will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great one.